But if you do touch each other, you will get chlamydia and die. Abstinence only sex education promotes abstinence from sex. It works on the assumption that young people are not and will not engage in sexual activity until marriage. Information on sexuality and contraception is restricted. Furthermore, information on pregnancy and disease prevention is often excluded from this approach. It has been found to be ineffective in decreasing rates of HIV among the developing world and does not decrease rates of sexual activity and unplanned pregnancy when compared to comprehensive sex education. Not having sex does not mean safe sex. Now, where does this idea of sustaining from sex come from? I'm so glad you asked. According to a 6th century philosopher, Pythagoras, otherwise known as the Triangle Guy, Illuminati conspire, intercourse was harmful to male health as the loss of semen was thought to be dangerous, hard to regenerate, and both physically and spiritually exhausting. Male semen was thought to be sacred and under no circumstances ever, ever allowed to be wasted. T's and C's apply, reproduction purposes. The loss of semen through ejaculation was thought to result in the loss of vital nutrients such as phosphorus. Maybe Pythagoras should have just stuck to maths and triangles. The conservation of semen allowed semen to be reabsorbed into the bloodstream and aid to the healthy development of the human body. What the f Roots of sexual abstinence was also found in the Old Testament of the Bible, where virginity was required by law before an individual could marry. Now remaining abstinent for cultural, personal or religious reasons is perfectly respectable. But wouldn't you want a comprehensive sex education for when the time does come? One of the main reasons behind abstinence-only sex education is religion. Although there exists a number of different religions in South Africa, they all seem to agree on one thing. Sex before marriage is a sin. This idea has been the basis of abstinence-only sex education for most LO teachers for many years. Research shows a South African LO teacher who openly admitted to refraining from teaching about comprehensive sex education because their religion does not allow them to have sex before marriage. Research shows that half the number of pupils who manage to abstain throughout high school have a change of heart as soon as they enroll in varsity. This probably means that by the end of all week, only about 20% of religious students are still abstaining. What this then means is that abstinence-only sex education in high school only focused on and benefited 20% of the students, while the remaining 80% missed out on the opportunity to learn about safe sex. By the way, here are a few of our celebrities who once had pretty rings. And here's them just a couple of years later. Females especially have always been taught from a cultural context that they need to remain pure and, you know, stay away from boys so that these boys can someday marry them. An example of a cultural major is umemulo. And this is a traditional Zulu ceremony held for virgin girls around the age of 21. This is to celebrate the girl's purity, and it symbolizes that she is now at an age where she can get married. It is believed that umfrefe, which is worn by the girl, is not to fall off or tear, and that if it does, the girl is actually not a virgin. Question. If the majority of these cultural teachings and measures are aimed at the girl, who does whoever is teaching these teachings think these boys are having sex with? In a study done on teachers' perspectives on abstinence and sex education, 25 teachers were for abstinence. 24 of those 25 teachers also recognized the fact that some learners were already sexually active. What is the point then of teaching abstinence only? Abstinence could be taught with other methods instead of just abstinence only, especially in the South African context where there is a higher rate of teenage pregnancy and HIV and AIDS. We all know how adolescents, especially us millennials, rely on the internet and social media for advice, guidance and entertainment. Yet it delivers nothing but sexual innuendos and IN YOUR FACE SEXY SEX STUFF. Sex is a perfectly normal, natural and healthy element of human existence. 
Rather than trying to enforce individuals to refrain from sex, educate them so they can make the decision for themselves. All of this begs the question, abstinence-only sex education, how is this still a thing?